Hi. Uh, so uh, great to be here. The COVID-19 and its quick spread all over taught us that there are some similarities between a cyber pandemic and a biological pandemic. A biological pandemic is driven by a human interactions while a cyber pandemic is driven by computers and networks interactions. In both cases, the physical boundaries are blurred, the confusion and uncertainty are huge, and while biological viruses spread within days or weeks, malwares can be spread within seconds or days. In order to deal with the biological pandemic, we use healthcare systems and law enforcement agencies. In order to deal with the cyber pandemic, we use a strong national threat. The Israeli National CERT is the CDC of Israel Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the cyber sphere. This is the Cyber Defense Center, which serves all the Israeli industry and citizens, aiming to improve cyber resilience. The center operates 24 seven and receiving online reports about cyber incidents. It provides first aid measures performs the primary triage on a national level, promotes vaccination, and educates the attacked entities how to improve next time. Today, I would like to speak about a cyber attack which took place a few months ago against the shipping sector in Israel. Although it started as a specific attack against a small company, it turned into a cyber pandemic threat against the Israeli economy, overlapping our country's COVID-19 lockdown. I am happy to note that after hours of an intense investigation, we were able to connect the dots and to reveal an entire attack infrastructure, which was built quietly over time, apparently in order to prevent the vaccines from arriving in Israel. So reports entered our third hotline. Each and every one of them was mitigated separately. They included the data leakage in an electric company, a ransom attack in a law firm and CPA office, a suspicious connection request to a shipping company and many more. Allegedly, there was no connection between the incidents, but due to the fact that our CERT serves all the Israeli cyber sphere and has excellent visibility throughout the industry, we investigated all the reports seeking common ground between them. What raised the red flag for us was a random report involving an unrecognized activity in an ERP company, thus widening and intensifying the investigation. The ERP company develops technology solutions for customs, cargo transportation, and international shipping. Approximately 70% of the cargo companies in Israel share its platforms and disruptions in the functionality of these platforms could cause significant damage to the shipment of goods to and from Israel. And in this particular time period, the goods also included millions of COVID-19 vaccines. So we contacted the ERP company and asked for its customers list. The list confirmed our suspicions and showed us that this company is probably the common ground we have been looking for. In essence, this, is, this was the attack vector. We immediately explained to the ERP company our theory and offered our assistance in the IR investigation. We asked their permission to contact their customers and provide them with IOCs and immediate recommendations for defense and mitigations. Very quickly, customers started to report back that they had detected malicious activity in their security systems. 
we told them to contact IR teams. And after a while, all the IR researchers began to share their findings. At that moment, we started a race against time, trying to defend the customers before someone would push the button. October 2020 and before, attackers broke into an ERP company and implemented persistence. Currently, we still cannot pinpoint the exact attack vector. However, the ERP company was completely unsecure and provided a perfect playground for the attackers. Non-vulnerabilities, VPN without MFA, weak DMZ, weak RDP, and many more. To make matter worse, the company also had full administrative privileges for remote access to all its customers. Those permissions allowed the attackers to do whatever they pleased within the customer's networks. After gaining the initial access, the attackers studied the network architecture, mapped the customers, and, create, and created a list of targets. In addition, they started their letter movement using real usernames and passwords, which may indicate they had access to the Active Directory. All this while blurring their footprints. The attackers received access to customers' networks and began to expand towards them using the backup server. For the connection, they used mainly unsecured RDP and VPN channels. For the persistence, they used legitimate tools and processes, implemented a task schedule, created a local admin user, and many more. They utilized a password that contained an old phrase in their language, meaning son of a donkey. They also implemented an attack tool allowing them to completely shut down the company's activity. Until that moment, the attackers operated in a silent mode, disguised their traces, and made it very difficult to expose them. In December 2020, we saw a plot twist. One of the customers identified an attempt to run RDP from his ERP company backup server, something that never had happened before. He reported to our cert and to the ERP company, which found the activity in the firewall and immediately shut down all connections via RDP channel. Following that, they contacted an IR company. The IR company sent us an initial report and began to explore the network. Their immediate findings showed that the company had many security flaws and it didn't keep logs. The IR company installed EDRs, but they made a huge mistake by deleting a few logs that did exist. And because of that mistake and a number of others along the way, the ERP company decided to end the contract and to try another IR company. The new IR company joined forces with our organization's IR division, enabling investigation of the network. Moreover, they shared their findings with the MSSP researcher from abro abroad. The, the researcher gained access to the C2 server and shared with the IR company the list of victims, as well as the username and password of the C2. The list contained approximately 90 victims. Half of them are direct customers of the ERP company. The C2 server revealed the full list of the attacked entities including the attack status of each and every one of them. The attackers realized that someone else was entering their server because each login throughout the person was already inside. 
So they shut down the web server, but the researcher managed to gain SSH access. More and more IR teams started to share their findings on the social media. And this is the moment when the attackers changed their modus operandi and started a mind game using social media, as well as a massive leak of information from the victims' networks. Among other things, the researchers attributed the attack to pay to key group. There is a consensus among the cybersecurity community in Israel regarding the attack attribution. Everyone understands that the attack was carried out by the pay to key group. Most of them attribute the group to a larger one known as Fox Kitten. However, there are disagreements about the group's motives, whether it was a financial motive or whether it was cyber terrorism or CNI. Until recently, the group used cyber attacks in order to make money. However, in some cases, we have seen signs of anti-Israeli ideology and a desire to cause psychological effect. Previous attacks attributed to this group included encrypting information and demanding ransom payments. And in order to make the victims pay, the group used the double extortion tactic, demanding payment for, release, for the release of the files while threatening to leak information. Indeed, some of the victims that refused to pay found the most sensitive information revealed in the darknet. This is the moment in which the attackers move to a high profile activity in order to exercise influence and widespread panic. They did it by conducted cynical polls suggesting the next victim's identity and activating dedicated pages in the social media. They posted information about the victims as well as promising a new victim every Wednesday. All this happened while releasing samples and dumps from the victims' networks, proving that the leaks were up to date. For example, a ransom attack against an electric company, a ransom, a, an attack against an industry entity, publishing usernames and passwords of security managers, threatening to publish technical documents and studies about secret projects, an attack against a, a company which provides security solutions. According to Pay2K, they obtained sensitive information about the, cost, the company's customers. An attack against a company which develops AI chips the group obtained access to the source code, and since the company didn't agree to pay the ransom fee, the code was leaked on the darknet. A certain hacker posted pictures of five men who allegedly belonged to the pay-to-key group and were responsible for the attack. According to his uh, threat intelligence research, the group used known vulnerabilities with public POC, and there was no indication for using zero-day or one-day vulnerabilities. Meanwhile, the Israeli search took the necessary measures to improve industrial res resilience and to prevent disruptions in transportation of the COVID-19 vaccines. The CERT identified the attack in its early stages and took measures to disarm the, click, the ticking bomb, shut down connections between the ERP network and critical infrastructure networks, conducted an IR investigation in the ERP company as well as in its customers and other victims, made threat intelligence research in order to find additional TTPs and IOCs, share them with the industry and made sure they are classified in the blacklists of the security systems. 
published alerts, which are up to date. First, TLP red alerts for customers only, which included IOCs and immediate recommendations for defense. And then with the understanding that there were many more victims, we published alerts to the entire industry, made phone calls to the victims and sent them IR teams. Throughout the event, we at the CERT found ourselves dealing with many dilemmas which required prompt decisions. For example, do we need to publish an alert to the public with all the IOCs and TTPs? So no, because it would damage the reputation of the ERP company. No, because the attackers might change their modus operandi and do things that they didn't necessarily intend to do at the current point of time. For example, move to a high mode activity, change the C2 address, run their ransom simultaneously, hasten to leak information and more. And another reason why not is that it could cause panic in the public regarding the arrival of the vaccines. Should we shut down the connection between the ERP company and critical infrastructure entities? Yes, the Israeli CERT is committed by law to our critical infrastructures, which are considered as a national interest. No, because we are a trusted zone that protects privacy and confidentiality. Another reason why not is that it could disrupt the business continuity of the critical infrastructure and all the companies that depend on it. Should we use the information we got from the C2 or not? Yes, by all means necessary. Yes, it had all the details we needed regarding the victims. We had to do everything in our power to prevent a national catastrophe. No, because the information was received in a problematic way. Should we ask ourselves where our boundaries are? Are the cases where it and how we receive the information? Should assert as a government entity share information with external researchers? Yes, it should be a give and take relationship. No, we need to protect the privacy of organizations and individuals. Moreover, we cannot share information before it is validated. And no, once we have released the information, we have no control in the way people will use it. Should we provide the ERP company confirmation that it can return to business? Yes, a business must be operational to survive. No, it is not our job to do security tests. And no, because we are unfamiliar with the remediation process that the company carried out. And last but not least, do we need to speak with the media? So no, because we sanctify the privacy and confidentiality of the reporters. Yes, the public needs to know. And yes, because there is a serious media echo and a lot of rumors and confusion. It is our duty to put things in order. Bottom line. Israel is a tough place to live. We are being attacked from all sides. The motives for the attacks are many and varied. It can be CNI, CNE, CNA, and many more. Very easily, they can turn into a cyber pandemic. The only way to deal with the situation is a strong national cert, which operates as a CDC, Cyber Defense Center. CERT can see the whole picture. It can connect the dots. And this is the way to stop the pandemic and to flatten the curve. Thank you.